In this video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox Ultralight Outdoor Pocket Stove. If you're interested, keep watching. So I am out in the woods today and I will be building a fire in the ultralight in a few minutes time. But what I wanted to do to start was to take it home to my tabletop where I can take it apart, show you how it's supposed to go together, talk about the, spe the specifications of the stove, show you how it can be used with some alternative fuels, and then we'll come back out and build the fire. Okay, let's start with assembling the stove. So the stove is in a package that I made for it. This is not what came with this little stove. It actually came in a small cotton stuff sack, which was sufficient for holding everything together. I just wanted to make a little case that was a little bit more durable over the long term. This is made from an old piece of barbecue cover. I did have another one of the stickers from Bushcraft Essentials that I put on it, just to give it a little bit of a touch. So what we get inside, very simple. Fire grate ash pan and three side components two of which are the same and the third has the feed port on it so there is a good number of ways i've seen people put this together i've tried most of the ways some of them are easier than others so there's quirks on all of them the first thing i'll tell you is this can be a little tricky even with experience to get together now once it goes together it locks in just fine it's just handling it while it's going together the key thing about these is and i'll show you on this plate it's right where my finger is is the slot where a corresponding tab on the other plate will interlock with it you can see it has two positions in that slot so i would start by inserting the tab through the longer straighter slot and then it would lock in at that little bit of an angle slot and i'll show you how that works once it all goes together so i start with any two plates i like to start with the two identical sides hook them together so they're hooked together like this take one of the plates and I've done it both ways where you can use either the ash pan or the fire grate but in this case I'm just going to use the ash pan find corresponding slots for the tabs that are on the ash pan get it into position it seems to be at its most challenging when you first start out okay so now I'm holding the ash pan together by the two sides and now I'll put the third side on we're actually going to get the fire grate in after the fact. I find it a little easier in the way for me. Now you may find it different. All right, so I have the ash pan inserted and the stove assembled. To get the fire grate in, the nice thing about this stove is it's very springy in nature. Once it's locked together, it's very solid, but there's enough spring that allow you to do a little bit of playing around, if you will. So what I'm going to do is take the fire grate, commit at an angle. It goes in the center of the three slots that are in the stove and I can work it down inside bending the plates as I need to to get them to line up. I think I've takes a little bit of maneuvering and it doesn't always go in just right. I've yet to figure out the perfect way of doing this. In fact I think it was a little easier when I first got the stove to getting it together. So what has happened just now, as I got the fire grate in, but the ash pan dropped out. So I do want to have the ash pan in place to show you. So once again, I'll work this one in. This may have been the easier way to do it anyway. All right, in on two sides. Locked in. All right, now it's completely together. And I'll bring you in a little closer to see on the sides you can see there are three slots and I have the ash pan and the fire grate in the lower two slots and you can see how it locks together at each of those joints with those double angled mating slots I guess. So now that it's together it's stable, very stable and it won't come apart short of actually you know crashing on something on top of it but it's very stable. There is one other piece, where did I place that one other piece? that goes with the stove. I have not used it yet. That's why it's so clean looking. And this is a trivet that's intended to be locked into the top of the stove that you can use if you're using a pot like maybe a 750 mil cup or the Adventure, Stanley Adventure cook set where the diameter is smaller than the circumference of the stove. So you'll need some type of a pot support. Let me just lock that into place. There are knots. There's another notch right at the top and with a little bit of flexing of the sides, you can lock that one into place. Like I said, I haven't used it because I haven't had the need because of all the pots that I've been using have been bigger than the diameter of the stove is or the, the cross 
uh, directions of the stove. So uh, I will talk about ways you can use that as well. Okay, so there is the stove fully assembled. I am going to take the trivet off, as I mentioned, because I don't feel the need to use it right now. But I will give you all the specifications that include the weight of the trivet. So this is truly an ultra light stove. It is made from stainless steel. It's a very good spring stainless steel that you know continues to be flexible even after having have a number of fires in it. It comes in at 2.8 ounces or 80 grams. Very lightweight. Very lightweight at that. At, at that. Now uh, the height from the ground to the top of the pot support comes in at three and a half inches or nine centimeters. The width, and the only way I could measure the width was from the center of one side over to the other corner, because it being three-sided, is three and seven eighths inches or 9.5 centimeters, and it has a burn chamber depth down to the fire grate from the top of the pot support of two and a half inches or 6.3 centimeters. And of course, I'm going to put all these details in the video description below for your reference. Okay, so now that we've gone over the configuration and how it goes together, let's talk about using this with wood. So I have it assembled in its intended fashion for use with wood with the fire grate in it. And uh, what we're going to do is just show about feeding sticks in through. So this stove really does not lend itself well to a top-down burn and, and, and a lot of sticks in. You might be able to get some in uh, horizontally. Uh, it's just going to be challenging just because of the triangular nature of the stove. It seems to be wider than it is, well, it is wider than it is tall. So it really is intended to be fed in through the feed port. So like other stoves that have the feed port uh, higher up on the side of the stove, you really are relegated to using relatively short pieces of wood. And so let me show you. This is what I consider about as large a piece of wood as I want. It's about five inches is long and because I can get most of that stick inside of the stove I have little worry that it's going to fall out. If I use pieces of wood longer than that this one would be in about eight inches then it's okay right now while the wood is all intact but as it's consumed inside of the stove the back end gets heavy and then it wants to fall out. And that's not a big issue as long as you're, you're diligent in making sure you constantly push the sticks in as they're consumed. However, if I'm using a long stick like this one and I put it in, it's just not going to go in well. And of course this is a little heavier on one end than the other, but it's still, uh, as soon as it gets consumed, you can see it wants to tip and fall out. So you really are relegated to using small sticks. And that's fine because the whole intent of this stove is for small sticks. Uh, we'll talk about what it's re where it really shines in a few minutes, but let's just talk about what is the philosophy of using the stove. Who is this for? What is it intended for? So this is intended to be an ultralight stove. This is meant for people who really want to reduce their pack weight, get down to the bare minimum, but want, still want to have a wood stove. I think it works at its best with an alcohol stove or solid fuel tablets, but can work very well with wood. It may or may not be, you may or may not consider it a primary use as wood stove. I, that's the way I have been using it, although I have tested, of course, with alcohol and solid fuels. But it works very well as a wood stove, but I think it works even better as an alcohol stove. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes' time. So now that I've shown you how to use it in its primary configuration, let's just talk about a few ways you can adapt this and make some changes in the way that it is used. So this uh, is going to take a little bit of, of uh, configuration to get it into those places. I think I'll just cut this out, putting it back together to save a few minutes time, but I'll show you what, what I end up with. All right, I've reconfigured the stove by removing the ash pan, and I've taken a little bit of weight off by doing that. In fact, I've taken 0.8 of an ounce off, so now we're down to two ounces without the ash pan and without the trivet or 59 grams. And what I've done is I've actually taken the fire grate and dropped it down into the lowest position so it's right at the bottom where the ash pan was a minute ago. So the advantage is obviously I have reduced the weight by, well, a little bit, half, uh, yeah, more, more than half an ounce, or about half an ounce, sorry. So it is a uh, little bit lighter and I've also increased the depth of the burn chamber. So now those slightly long pieces of wood, which may or may not have fallen out, I can get in with greater assurance that they're going to stay inside the stove as they're consumed. Of course, 
there's quite a few large holes that are now exposed so hot coals can fall through and of course the fire is even closer to the surface the stove is resting on so you do have to be careful to make sure you're on a fire safe surface either mineral soil or a rock. I'd recommend using a hard surface like a flat rock because the way this stove is configured with these quite narrow not sharp but very thin edges that it can be pushed into mineral soil very easily and then you're going to include occlude or cut off airflow from underneath. So recommendation is put it on a hard surface like a rock. So I've not only lightened it but I've made the burn chamber a little deeper as well. So here is an interesting way of using it as well because I, I, I do try to see if I can get the most out of it. This has the traditional what I call mostly a German design with the feed port high on the stove and that means that your feeding sticks in from above so that they'll set inside as opposed to the American design stoves like the firebox and the emberlet, emberlet stove which had a feed port down low allowing for longer sticks to be fed in constantly from the side. Can you do that with this stove? Sure you can. Just turn it upside down. All you up, turn it upside down, now the feed port is at the bottom. But in order to make that work most effectively I'm going to move the fire grate to the position at the very top where the trivet will normally look so or normally be. So let me show you that. Okay so I've reconfigured the stove so that you can use it in an inverted position with wood. So let me show you how I went about doing that. So very quickly what I did is I started by assembling the stove in a traditional manner but I used the trivet in place of the ash pan where the ash pan would normally go at the bottom. And the only reason I'm doing that is to give me uh, some stability to the stove while I'm assembling it. So when I get those three sides together and the trivet in place then I turned the stove over and worked at the top with the fire grate. So the fire grate is now in place where the trivet would normally go. So they're just reversed in positions. So now I can turn the stove upside down so that the feed port is down low near the bottom. The fire grate is just inside but still off of the ground. So it's off the ground by just about half of an inch. Now I can either leave the trivet in place if I'm using a smaller pot or I can just pop the trivet out with very little effort if I'm using a larger pot on top of this. And now I can feed long sticks in just as I would with other stoves that are designed to feed in from the bottom. So again of course you don't have, a, you don't have an ash pan under the fire grate so you do again have to make sure you're on a fire safe surface. Let's just drop the 12, meter, 12 centimeter zebra on top for reference to see how, about how big of the, the stove is. This is a great size for this pot. I don't think I would use it much larger than this, uh, a much larger pot than this uh, because this is about what it's intended to for. This is really a one person stove for boiling water or cooking. You could stretch that to two people, certainly water for two people, but uh, it's mostly a one person stove. So that's the, the intent of it. Now let's, we've shown how it can be used with wood. Let's now discuss how we can use it with alcohol. Okay, so I've reconfigured the stove where I have left the ash pan in its original position at the bottom slot, taken the fire grate out, I can either choose to use or not use the trivet at this point. What I'll do now is take my Alex burner and drop it into the stove and I can place a pot either directly on top if it's large enough to fit on the, the integrated pot sports there or I can put the trivet back in if I'm using something smaller. So if I'm using the integrated pot supports, the distance from the top of the burner to the top to the bottom of the pot will be one and one quarter inches. If I put the trivet in place and place a pot or a smaller cup on top of that, it reduces that height, that gap to seven eighths of an inch. Just the same, if I'm using the pot on top and I used it with a, with a pot very similar to this, using one ounce of, of uh, water or one ounce of fuel and two cups of water, I was able to get a very respectable burn time of five minutes and 45 seconds. Actually that's very quick. So this is where this stove really does shine is with alcohol. Now in order to set it up for esbit or other solid fuels or even a gel fuel, we have to make an adjustment which I'll put together now. Okay, I've reconfigured the stove one more time. This time I took the ash pan and I put it in the slots the highest on the sides of each of the plates. So remember I mentioned there were three slots. So I've now inserted it in the top of the three slots. So it sits up very near the top of the feed port. So what you have at this point is if you were to put a solid fuel tablet like an Esbit inside on the plate, 
from the plate to the integrated pot stands we're looking at just two inches and of course that'll be a little bit less if, if you use the trivet inside of there so it's a near perfect height for use with the uh, esbit solid fuel tablets or other solid fuel tablets uh, with a gel fuel you could use this as well but you do need to have some little type of a cup a foil cup of some type or a bowl that you can put inside to put your fuel inside them all right so now I have shown how to use it with esbit uh, with wood with alcohol with esbit I will tell you that I have not been able to use this with wood pellets for the simple reason that the holes are too big but what about with charcoal so with charcoal all I'll need to do and I'll explain this rather than demonstrate it is take the solid fuel plate or the sorry the in this term the ash plate and insert it in the bottom slot either that or the fire grate either one will work in that bottom slot and you can get in six briquettes Kingsford uh, charcoal briquettes inside of there for a good number of briquettes that'll burn for quite a long time and provide good heat for cooking with okay I'm just going to give you a few more thoughts on the stove and then we'll head out into the woods and do some demonstrations all right, just a few more thoughts on the stove before we go out into the woods and do some testing with it. So you have probably realized by now that it can be a bit of a challenge getting this stove together and get it into its various configurations. It is easier the more you practice with it, but there's a couple things I've found with it over time. Uh, you can probably also assume because of the very lightweight thin nature of this stainless steel that it may be prone to warping and again you would be correct it does warp to a certain degree now in the cases of the sides they haven't warped out of shape but when the plates arrived they were perfectly flat now they have a slight curve to them which may or may not be a benefit when it comes to assembling the stove but the thing that has warped the most on this has been the fire grate itself hopefully you'll be able to see that there is a bit of a warp in that and again like other stoves I just want to mention warping is not a deal breaker when it comes to a stove like this what it does though in this case is it flexes uh, just makes it a little bit more challenging to get it together fixing it bending they will bend back into shape now the spring na nature of this steel resists physical manipulation while it's cold but if the next time I put it in the stove I invert it so that it's bowed up rather than bowed down then the heat will bring it back into true just naturally so that warping did make it a little bit more challenging to put this stove together I guess that is the compromise that you're making or the trade-off decision that you're making in order to get an ultra light stove that works extremely well with alcohol or solid fuel tablets then you're going to have to concede that there will be some warping that makes it a bit of a challenge to get together it does not in any way affect performance once you get it together it's just getting it together that can be a bit of a challenge all right now let's get out in the woods and build a fire in it all right, as I quite often do, I have the ultralight bush box set up in a fire pit here, and that's primarily for wind protection, just so I can give it its best chances of giving you a good demonstration how it's supposed to work. The ground underneath it is quite damp, and that's, again, I think I mentioned this before in another video, that the ash pan, which is installed, will help in this, and then it'll protect from drawing moisture up into the stove, as well as protect from any hot coals falling down to the earth. I do have the trivet sitting on top for this demonstration, because I am going to show you this stove in operation with uh, in operation with both a small pot and a large pot just to show you what the difference might be so to get this started I am going to use a commercial fire starter that I have to prep up just a little bit and then I'll drop that in and I have some small splits of wood that I should be able to get going fairly quickly except I put that one out didn't give it a chance Let's try that again. There we go, I think that's going now. Be a little bit more careful putting it in. And what I have is just some uh, small splits of maple and birch, which I'll carefully set in so I don't put the flame out again. <laughs> Okay, it's uh, starting to take off now. I just gave it an extra couple seconds before I turned the camera back on. I just wanted to make sure that the wood was catching. It seemed a little slow for some reason. No expectation why. I don't think it was too damp. It's wood that I've had here that I've split up and uh, saved here for, for videos like this. Uh, yeah, it's taken off now. That's better. Okay, so as that starts to catch on, they are kind of big pieces of wood. 
to be using in a small stove like this, but I wanted to demonstrate a couple of things by doing so. Uh, first off, the slice of pieces of wood that you're going to be putting in, like a lot of the Bushcraft Essential stove, because of that higher uh, level feed port you need them to be at a size that they're not so long that they're going to fall back outwards however having said that I do have some longer splits of maple that I'm going to try and demonstrate that you can actually feed this with long strip or long sp uh, splits and and still have it work so everything is taken off good yeah I have some larger short splits I want to feed into it now And when I see that those uh, appear to be fairly engaged, then uh, we'll put on the pot a few times, or the two different pots that I have, so you can see those from both being used. I think that's working pretty good. So as I mentioned in the in the video, the portion that I did at home, that it may be a bit finicky or a bit uh, tricky to put together if you don't have a lot of experience and even with experience it does get easier uh, the more often you put it together but once it goes together it's very stable it looks thin it looks unstable because of its thin metal but it's not the design is great and it actually holds together very well as you'll see you can use a fairly heavy pot on this and and still have it nice and stable so the first pot i'm going to put on is my Tom Shoe Titanium 750 mil pot. It's smaller, and this is the type of pot you're going to need that trivet for. So you can see that it fits on just nicely with the trivet, but without the trivet, it would have been too small, or the yeah, the pot would have been too small to sit inside of there. So you do see a little bit of dampening of airflow, not significant, but a little bit of smoke being created. Uh, that's to be expected. There is room for the air to uh, ventilate out through the top to exhaust out through the top all the way around uh, it'd be a little bigger as you'll see in a minute with a bigger stove or bigger pot because it's going to sit a little higher off of the stove itself so i think get another small split in there and just keep feeding them in all right so that is uh, going well let's take that pot off put on a larger pot. So, full of pine needles and leaves on the bottom. So this is my Pathfinder bush pot. And this is as large a pot as you're likely going to put on a stove this small. But look how much better the airflow is. Just because it was lifted off of the stove just a bit more by the integrated pot stands, the points on the three sides, that allow it to sit a little higher. There's a bit more exhaust room underneath the pot for flames to come out. So while this seems to be a, be a bit of a mismatch in terms of a big pot on a small stove, it is working. All right, I did say I wanted to show using longer splits of wood, so let's see if I can't slide this in. And that works quite well. I don't know if this angle, if I'm gonna get more than one or two in. Of course, the advantage of being able to do this means less wood processing, less sawing, less chopping, less splitting. And you just have to sit and work your pieces of wood in a little bit at a time. And I just put in some cold, damp wood, so I expect it to be a little smoky, but the flames are going. Yeah, it's catching underneath, as you can see. All right, so that's all I wanted to do for this demonstration to show you how to use it in its original intended configuration. Likely I'll come out at another time and use it in some of the alternative configurations I showed at home and we'll demonstrate it that way. But for today, I'm gonna to use it this way, get that water hot and either have coffee or lunch. I'm not quite sure which I'm gonna do with it. So once again, this is the Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box Ultralight Outdoor Pocket Stove. It is the lightest in the lineup from from Bushcraft Essentials, and it is intended for people who are looking for an ultra light option, but still want the ability to use it with fuels like wood. I think primarily it works at its best with an alcohol stove, but as you saw today, it works very well with wood. The only thing I would say about it, as you saw in the demonstration, I did use it with the trivet on top, and a small pot does seem to dampen down the exhaust ventilation a bit. That wasn't the case when I put the larger pot on because the integrated pot stands raised it up enough that there was plenty of exhaust air 
in it. So it is can be a bit tricky to put together, but that's not a problem. If you're willing to put in the time to learn how to do this, and uh, I think you'll find that this is a good option in ultralight stoves. As I mentioned, I was only going to do one demonstration with it today in its full original configuration. I will likely do more demonstrations with it at a later time in some of the alternative uh, configurations as well as use some of the alternative fuels with it. But uh, I think that was enough for this video. Okay, what I'd like to do at this point is open it up to you. If you have any comments on the ultralight or have any questions on it, please put them in the comments section below. All the statistics on this stove as well as where you can purchase it will be put in the video description below. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.